Welcome to be Freaky Big Mastery workout number one. Today we're hitting chest, back, and shoulders as well. We're going to throw in some abs. So I'm going to be releasing all the secrets that you can get to start pushing your training to the next level. Hope you enjoy it. Welcome to Freaky Big Mastery. This is the mastery workout number one. We're starting right where it all begins. Here in the changing room. So what we'll get into to start with is the first thing that I do that I come in is I get out my workout sheet. And when I printed it off earlier, beforehand, so what I do is I actually pull the sheet out and write the workout into my journal exactly as it's going to happen. So in other words, here it is, as you can see I've written this out, so you can look at that, and then I know that I'm going to do my rep range here is going to be, we'll get into that later, and then I got the workouts, my sets, my reps, my weight, and everything set to go. The other thing I always do, mass size. I don't start any workout before I pop a whole handful of these. I don't even count them anymore. I just pop them in. That way the enzymes get in there working right while I'm doing my workout. So, afterwards when I start eating some of the megabolic meals, boom, the enzymes are happening, recovery is happening instantly. Actually even as the workout progresses. So, let's not waste any time. Let's get in there and do some work. with our workout, the first two exercises in the sequence. Look here in the book as we already written down in the change room, we're going with incline bench and side laterals. So we know we're going to do a 10, 8, 6, 10 sequence in the training. This is kind of in the middle of one of the mastery courses. So I've already set up the weights in freehand. Of course, if you're doing this on your own, you'd be working back and forth and setting them up. So now we're going to start on the incline bench, then we're going to skip over to the side lateral. So let's get started. All right. Get some comments the way it's form as he's going. For goal, notice how close he's coming to the neck. Maximum stretch. Good pace, good explosiveness on the way up. It's not quite a failure either. Alright. Then he jumps right into the side laterals. And what I call these is slow supersets. In other words, I'm not rushing to the other exercises in traditional supersetting. I'm actually taking a little bit of time, maybe 30 seconds to a minute, depending on how intense the workout is. Getting set, a couple deep breaths. Let me grab. Let me go right into it, okay? So. Notice his hands. He's got the wrist. He's also using the bench, which is forcing his shoulders to do all the work. Okay, now we're going back to the, back to the incline bench. So, now we're going to up the weight a little bit. Run over. Grab some weights, and while I'm doing this, I'm concentrating on deep breathing. Just like that. In and out. So, the other thing is, is I'm normally having chit chat time. Of course, I am today for the camera, but it's right back in, right back home. Always thinking safety. I know it sounds good with the plates rattling and everything. But be safe. Collars on the plates. So let's right back into chest again. Line everything up. Get set. Here go to failure. So, that's another thing is what you're looking for when you're at the end of your set is a little bit of a forced decrement. It starts to slow down at the end. You don't have to go right to failure, just to the point where the weight is slowing down significantly. That's the optimum set range. Drink of water, and then right back into it again. Really, I wondered about that for years. You know, what's optimal? going to failure or not, and 
Um, when I did this style of training, I realized that you, know, you don't need to. Absolutely. There's no athlete in the world trains to failure yet. Guys don't run the 100 meter final of failure every time. Yeah. They run at 70%, 75%. Yeah, it's about the total cumulative stress of the whole Volume. workout. Over and over, so let the whole workout build. So the start of this workout, it seems kind of easy. By the end, you're really good. So let's get back at it. So how many sets are you doing today, Wade? We're going to do with uh, four sets per body per, per, per exercise, excuse me. And we're following today's a 10, 8, 6, 10 sequence, which would occur um, generally in the middle of some of the mastery, the mastery workouts. So depending on where you're at, of course, the book tells you where you should be when you're doing your training. So you can tailor your workouts. At some points we're doing maybe only three sets, sometimes as many as five. Again, it determines on where you're at in your training. So today, I'm picking in the middle of the road, because that's where most people are. They're kind of an intermediate. Trying to push past the intermediate level into the advanced zone, right? And that's really not a function of effort, it's a function of education. So in other words, if you're on that cusp and you're trying to break through it, the difference is education, okay? So you need the education to get you over the hump. That's what changed when I got educated. I mean, I trained for 10 years before I found myself a world-class coach. It took me 10 years to win a provincial championship. It took me two years to get to the world championships after that. So anybody education. watching this video who's been training for less than 10 years, they, uh, they're, on, they're way ahead of the game. Yeah, what's really interesting is I learned as I was training that be a lifelong learner, okay? So when I became a lifelong learner, I took my growth step up. Well. So I'm always learning. So even doing this, I'm still learning. So it's an attitude that everybody needs to adapt in order to continually grow. So let's get back at it. Notice how straight his elbows are. Just like a straight line from uh, one elbow to the next. And just getting a big stretch. And then back and back over. And back to the shoulders. This count is we're going to six. Gonna bump the weight up a little bit. This is uh, pyramiding up the weights just slightly from set to set. Yeah. And the biggest thing is it's intensity of effort. So when you're first starting out, you're first starting out. So it's better to, instead of moving up in weight, try and move up in your mental intensity. So in other words, make each exercise as hard as possible and concentrate on working the muscle groups that you want to work. That's the key to the success. The muscles, they don't know the difference between 20 and 30. They only know how hard to contract. That's what you want to get. So here we go, concentrating. Just to continue what Wade just said, it's about uh, not having ego. You're working out and doing what's best for your muscles, not, not your brain. So, you can really feel those ones. <laughs> also, one of the things you want to do is be a kid in the gym. Just because you're hardcore doesn't mean you have to throw weights around, it doesn't have to put your weights and stuff back. It's about having respect for the people that are in the gym. You know, what they're doing. Make it a positive experience. You know, at one time when I was younger, I used to think hardcore men throwing gym stuff around, busting things up, screaming, swearing, all that stuff. You don't need to do that. Save all that energy and channel right here into the arm. That's what's going to make the difference in your body. So, as you can see, even though I'm only a few sets in, the oxygen is starting to pick, to pick up. So you hear that panting, there's a little bit of oxygen down. That's what we're looking to measure the intensity. So it's not so much how much weight you're pushing, how intensely to get that oxygen debt built up. So back at it again. 